So what is going on guys, NandoPants93 here with another video and today we're going to talk about iPadOS 14 Beta 5. It has officially released for developers as of Tuesday, which is today the 18th. So and then tomorrow it should release to public beta testers on the 19th and that's it's usually one day lagging behind so that 24 hour lag behind is when the public developers will actually get it so we're gonna dive right in a lot of this is gonna be stability improvements because beta 4 really regressed the stability of the you know iPad OS 14 software so before we get into that let's jump in I'm gonna show you guys a screenshot of the actual file size so it was about 1.7 gigabytes on my iPad Pro 12.9 2018 and I was on beta 4. So if you weren't on beta 4, it might be even bigger. So again, twice as much storage, keep that in mind. So I wanted to give at least four gigs of room before I update it. If you have any less, make sure you clear up some space. So, and then just to jump into the about section, if you click on the actual software version, now we're on version D. So it's 18A5351D, before we were on version E. So we are getting closer and closer. So we're probably gonna see C, B, A, and then a GM, and then the final release, which will probably release when the iPhone 12 comes out in September. I'm assuming that's when we're gonna get iOS 14 and iPadOS 14 released to the general public. And then again, to reiterate who is able to get this download, anybody with an iPad Air 2 or higher, iPad mini 4 or higher, or any iPad Pro, pretty much ever. I think even the 9.7 and the 10.5 ones, those also are allowed to get iPadOS 14, so keep that in mind. And again, to go back on what the biggest issues were, the biggest issues we had were with connectivity and stability issues, right? So a big one for me was AirDrop. AirDrop wasn't working as reliably as it used to, especially on beta two and three. And I rely on AirDrop a ton, right? And the reason somebody actually commented, don't, don't like my videos show up on both my iPad and my iPhone. They don't because I opt out of photo stream and opt out of as much iCloud storage as possible because I'm cheap like that. So I need AirDrop to be able to move stuff around. So hopefully that gets fixed and that'll get touched on in a later video, on the follow-up video. So to actually go over some of these stability issues, I know a lot of people had issues with some of the most common games. They weren't opening or they would open up and then crash right away. So my best example is Call of Duty. I do believe it was just a simple patch that Apple had to make. And you guys can see that Call of Duty is working and I'm able to kind of do whatever I want and I can move to the next target and play around and Call of Duty is working fine. So if you guys are Call of Duty players that were missing it on beta four, welcome back because Call of Duty is working perfectly fine. And also I have noticed, even though I've only had this for about an hour, I was having a few issues with LumaFusion where I would have to, every single time I would open it up and then leave the application and then go back to it, it wouldn't play anything. So it would kind of just be stuck and then I would have to open it up, quit out of it and then open it up again. So hopefully as time goes on, I'll notice that happen less and less. And then one other huge thing, which I thought, you know, one of the most underrated things is the weather widget. So weather widget, I said in beta four got fixed. And then I remember it would keep me in Cupertino. Then somebody commented, hey, just change your actual address on the widget. So that's what I did. Long pressed here, edited widget, and then you can actually put in your information or your city. But then I don't know about you guys, but the option for my location was not there on beta four. So beta four did not have my location and now I'm happy to be able to do that. So now no matter where I am, it knows my location instead of me having to manually put it in. And then the last one has to be with Apple TV. So in the Apple TV app, you can now opt into one of their new services, which is bundling both CBS and Showtime for 10 bucks a month to add to your Apple TV subscription. So that's nice. And you guys just saw that pop up to invite uh, my friends and family to join it. So that's, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of Apple TV. Again, I'm yet to pay for it actually, because I'm still using my iPhone 11 Pro Max purchase for that one year free. So I'm a big fan of it, but if I had to pay five bucks, I don't know, but I think I would pay $5, especially if, you know, the shows that I want to watch are going to get that season two, which I think they will. But that's pretty much going to do it for this review. Again, it's all going to be back-end stability improvements. I'm hoping we're going to have a lot less jitteriness. I don't, I'm not going to have to restart my iPad, which I had to do a few times during beta four. Um, I had issues with some of the, my most used apps, which, and again, those issues, they weren't detrimental. Like I still was able to get my job done and the work that I needed to do done. It just slowed it down a tad bit. And again, I expect that because I opted in by myself to go into the beta program and I put it on my main device. So that's on me and that's my, my choice, right? That's why I don't complain too much about it, but just want to let you guys know, I wouldn't fully, fully recommend it if it's your main device, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's going to ruin your, your phone or your device or your life and not let you be able to do things. It might slow you down a tad bit. So 
If you're okay with that, download it now, or if you're not, just wait for the, the public release in September or October, whenever it does. But again, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, guys, peace.